consultant in the ENT department at Sir Ganga Ram Hospital in New Delhi, mainly interested in cochlear implantation and endoscopic sinus surgery. He is here to talk to us about various problems that we face in our day-to-day -day lives. Uh, welcome Dr. Sharma, it's a complete pleasure to have you here with us today. It's a pleasure being here. Thank you. Uh, we would start by asking you a very common term that we've heard. Uh, what, is it, what exactly is sinusitis? Sinusitis is an infection of the lining of the sinuses mm -hmm. and the sinuses are uh, air spaces in the uh, bones of our skull mm -hmm. here in our forehead, under the eyes mm -hmm. and these spaces open into the nose okay. and uh, these spaces are themselves called sinuses mm -hmm. and uh, if uh, there is a blockage of one of these openings mm -hmm. uh, of the sinuses into the nose then the mucus which is produced in the sinus it doesn't, it doesn't get out, so it stays there and gets infected. Okay. And then it starts causing all the symptoms of sinusitis. Okay. And uh, these symptoms are usually um, facial pain, headache, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of drip, post nasal drip, mucus dripping down the back of the throat. Okay. And uh, when it becomes acute, then a lot of pain and even fever. Okay. And uh, what are the options for treatment available in India? The uh, treatment uh, options available here are the same as anywhere else. All the options are available here. Okay. The basic uh, option, the first option that we always uh, try is always medical management. Okay. In acute sinusitis, the acute infection, this medical always almost works. Okay. And uh, surgery is never an option for that. Mm -hmm. In chronic sinusitis, which is a chronic problem of where sinusitis keeps happening recurrent again and again, mm -hmm. there you have the uh, options of uh, uh, giving medical management for at least a couple of months, a couple of courses okay. of uh, antibiotics, uh, uh, medicines to make the mucus thinner, let it flow out, mm -hmm. and nasal sprays, saline sprays, steroid sprays, deep okay. and And uh, if these medical, uh, if this medical management or repeated courses don't seem to work, and the patient is not getting better, mm -hmm. and then the patient opts for it, then the next option would be uh, sinus surgery. Okay. And uh, there are uh, two types now. Uh, mm -hmm. One is the conventional, now what is conventional, that is the endoscopic sinus surgery, okay. where the surgery is done with the help of the telescopes okay. and through the nose itself, there are no scars on the face mm -hmm. and the uh, patient is generally comfortable after the surgery also in the post-op period. Mm -hmm. But the most recent treatment now, the latest treatment available is the balloon sinoplasty, okay. which is a catheter based technology just like the angioplasty for the heart. Okay. And uh, then small balloon catheters are put into the openings of the sinus through the nose itself. Mm -hmm. Just dilated for about 10 seconds and then mm -hmm. left, taken out, withdrawn. Okay. And uh, patients are very comfortable with this, they are able to get back to work within one or two days. Mm -hmm. And uh, the results are very good. Mm -hmm. And this technology is also very good here. Alright. Uh, coming to hearing loss, uh, doctor, what are the various kinds of hearing loss, uh, the losses that people actually go through? And do we have various kinds of hearing loss or there is? There are a couple of uh, types. Uh, one is the congenital, okay. which means that you are born with a hearing loss. Okay. And uh, the other is the acquired, which okay. is you have you are born with normal hearing, but you develop the hearing loss later in life. Mm -hmm. And the congenital losses are usually um, uh, either conductive, that means uh, you know someone is born, child is born maybe without the ear, or the ear is not developed, the pinna the ear canal is not developed, so the sound is not able to get in. Okay. And the other one is where the child is born with all normal structures appearing normal, mm -hmm. but for some reason the cochlea itself is not functioning and that is called a nerve or a sensory neural loss. Okay. And uh, in the acquired uh, conditions we have uh, so many uh, uh, categories of children with a cold and the fluid behind the eardrum mm -hmm. uh, that causes a hearing loss. In adults, you can have uh, infections which cause a hole in the eardrum or perforation mm -hmm. that causes a hearing loss. Okay. Uh, many diseases like measles, mm -hmm. mumps okay. can cause a sensory neural loss also, either in one ear or sometimes in both ears, okay. where the patient loses the hearing completely. Okay. And uh, infections, meningitis, for example, can cause a hearing loss. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So that is true that uh, we've heard a lot of people say a lot of times that. Um, you know, I have a hearing problem in one ear, 
whereas the other year is just fine. So yes. is it a myth or is it is it true that this can happen? That no, that's uh, that's very common because uh, if uh, the person has a problem only in one year, okay, then they'll have a hearing loss only in one year. Okay, and uh, even uh, example, children born with hearing losses also may be born with hearing loss only in one year. Okay. Or later on in life, if you have a disease which affects only one year, then you have hearing loss only in one year. Okay. And uh, what are the treatment options available for uh, deaf children? Yeah. Uh, deaf children, uh, first we diagnose or we try and find out to what extent is the deafness. Okay. That means uh, at nowadays treat, uh, the diagnostic options for the children are uh, such that you can diagnose within a week after they have been born, you can make out and find out everything about the hearing. What is there a hearing loss? At what level is it? And how much is it? Okay. And once we know the degree of hearing loss, then the treatment option is of course. Okay. If the child is, for example, born without an external ear, mm -hmm. then surgery to develop or build an external ear okay. by the otologist, the ear ear surgeons or the plastic surgeons mm -hmm. is done. If the child has a hearing loss because of uh, uh, fluid behind the ear drum. Then uh, surgery, which involves putting a small tube or grommet behind the eardrum, that is done. Okay. And if the child is born with a sensory level hearing loss, that means the cochlea itself is to the inner ear is not functioning, mm -hmm. then uh, the option available is either a hearing aid. Mm -hmm. If the hearing is uh, less than 70 decibels, mm -hmm. that means it is moderate to severe category, mm -hmm. they can still do very well with hearing aids. Okay. But if the hearing is lost at more than 70 decibels, that means more than severe to profound, mm -hmm. then the only option left is to go in for a surgery called a cochlear implant, okay. where in a, uh, mm -hmm. a device is implanted into the uh, ear, mm -hmm. the bone of the ear, behind the ear. Mm -hmm. And this device uh, bypasses the cochlea itself and directly stimulates the hearing nerve. Okay. So the child has to wear a small uh, unit like mm -hmm. a uh, behind the ear, Hearing aid. Yeah, yeah. You see people with hearing aids. Yeah, yeah. Like a behind the ear hearing aid, they wear that. Mm -hmm. And the moment they wear that, they are able to hear all the sound around. So it is a very effective method. Very so effective it's... method for children. Okay. And uh, they get excellent hearing with it. They are able to. Children with no hearing at all, mm -hmm. who would otherwise want to be considered as deaf and dumb, okay. can now bring, can now be brought to a stage that they are able to go to school, normal school, mm -hmm. pass their exams, go to college, and come out and start working just like. Everyone, normal people in society. Okay, a um, lot of these teenagers uh, walk around with iPods and you know Walkman. We started with walk, the Walkman era, but now the iPod era. Yeah. So, um, are iPods actually dangerous uh, for our ears? Yeah, uh, it's true. Uh, we started off with the Walkman, then came the Discman, mm -hmm. and now that you've got the iPods. iPods. But the difference between these is as the technology gets better and it's digital, mm -hmm. uh, the the instrument is able to produce louder sound, okay. clearer sound, okay. which goes through the headphones. So okay. previously in a Walkman, if you turn the volume up too high, the sound would get distorted. So most people would prefer not to hear it at that point. But nowadays, uh, because the clarity of sound is there, people prefer to put up the volume very high and listen mm -hmm. to it. Mm -hmm. And that is definite. That is a definite known cause uh, of hearing loss. Okay. And uh, people who say teenagers, if they are listening to a uh, of man, a couple of hours a day, they are very likely to develop a hearing loss uh, in their life. Uh, so just a question of time. Mm -hmm. uh, different people have a different susceptibility to developing a hearing loss depending on their genetic structure. Okay. So some may develop it early, some later, but they will definitely go on to develop a hearing loss. So mm -hmm. uh, if someone has to use earphones or headphones uh, with uh, listening to something like music at a louder volume, then mm -hmm. the only advice you can give is either you should cut short the period Make it short, less than half an hour a day, mm -hmm. or cut the volume down. Okay. Uh, also talking about cleaning the eardrums and cleaning the ears, basically ear wax. Mm, is hydrogen peroxide considered a safe? Uh, yeah. is, is it safe? I, I use hydrogen peroxide, but okay. uh, I use it in a clinical condition. So okay. I know that the eardrum is fine, mm -hmm. and I want to make that let the, the wax dissolve a bit quickly, so okay. I can bring it out. I think it's a little uh, dangerous for uh, people to use hydrogen peroxide on their own okay. because the hydrogen peroxide that we get in the market is very strong and it has to be diluted many times with water mm -hmm. before it can be put in the ear otherwise it can cause burns inside okay. the ear and uh, that's the way it works so it can burn the skin of the ear and the ear down so, so I think uh, uh, the 
regularly available uh, uh, mixtures for dissolving wax which is available in the pharmacies are probably much safer than using hydrogen peroxide yes. or whatever. Yes. Okay, and how often should we clean our ears? No, um, I would never advise anyone to clean their ears. Okay. Because the moment you clean your ears, you will go on to develop a problem mm -hmm. uh, in your ear okay. at some point in your life because okay. you have been cleaning it. Mm -hmm. The skin in the ear, inside the ear canal is very thin. And it has no fat under it, it is directly attached to the bone. Okay. So, um, if you put anything hard in the ear, and even something like a cotton bud, okay. just a sweep is enough to scratch the skin against the hard bone, okay. and then you develop a little bit of infection and it starts itching, and then you feel like cleaning it again and again. Mm -hmm. And that's how people get into a habit of cleaning regularly, but it's a bad habit. Okay. And, uh, and it is not safe. It's not safe and it's not uh, considered medically correct. And uh, we have all heard a lot about middle ear infections. Yes. So, what are middle ear infections, and what is the cure and treatment? Uh, there are uh, there is an acute middle ear infection that okay. means a child uh, goes to sleep in the night, is having a cold, and then the mm -hmm. middle of the night wakes up with a terrible ear ache in one ear. Mm -hmm. and that is usually a middle ear infection. That means okay. pus is there behind the ear. I mean that's because the cold has travelled okay. from the nose to the ear. Uh -huh. uh, but uh, other infections, it could be a chronic infection within a child with uh, say a large adenoid problem. Mm -hmm. uh, adenoids are like tonsils but they are in the nose. Mm -hmm. These adenoids when they are large, they block the tube between the nose and the ear, okay. the eustachian tube. And when they block the tube and it stops functioning, water fills the ear. Okay. So that water is initially very uh, thin like water and later on it becomes like glue. So we also call it glue ear. Okay. And that uh, doesn't cause uh, pain usually mm -hmm. doesn't cause any hole to develop in the eardrum but if persists then it causes a hearing loss in the child's person yeah okay. and uh, the other kind of a hearing loss is the chronic uh, separative otitis media what we call CSOM where a person because of an infection develops a hole in the eardrum mm -hmm. and then that hole doesn't heal and stays there so that is a, a chronic perforation or a CSOM okay. that is the other kind of 